Welcome to Gentle Restorative. My name is Sandra, and I'd love for you to just close your eyes, take a deep breath in and hold it. Okay, let it go. Just follow the next couple of breaths for a moment. And then let's go ahead and inhale the arms up. When the palms come together, you'll exhale them home to your heart. And pause here, of course, to set your intention for your practice. When you're ready, release the arms. Inhale them back up. So as the arms come back down, you're going to interlace the fingers. Take the hands behind the head. Get nice and comfortable. Make sure you haven't forced a, a big arch in the low back. So draw the stomach in. Inhale as you lengthen. Exhale. Side bend to the right. So <laughs> don't go so far that you're going to tip over or that the left leg and sit bone come off the mat. Try to keep that top elbow open rather than letting it fall down around your head. And then let's inhale the center. Exhale to the other side. And then back up, release the arms. We're going to grab some props here. <clears throat> Go ahead and grab your blanket. Um, I know mine doesn't look like it's in any special format, but it kind of is. So just long and narrow. That's going to go way out behind your head. So when we lay down and we eventually put our arms overhead, I want the wrist to be able to land on that blanket. So, you know, get it quite a distance out there. The bolster is going to come across your mat horizontally. So the legs are going to end up on top of that bolster. So let's go ahead and slide that right underneath the knees. Gently lay back. You can just test out where your blanket is for a moment. And then if it's perfectly situated, go ahead and bring the arms back down alongside you. And close your eyes. So you know, moving all these classes online and being in the house a lot has challenged my, um, my resources as far as coming up with themes. I mean, usually I'm out in the world. I see something, it gives me an idea. I am no longer out in the world. And um, so it's funny that the universe has a way of moving around your obstacles, right? And the signs that I needed the other day came to me. And so I thought I would break down their symbolism. And remember, you know, when we talk about um, animals, especially like in a totem kind of uh, symbolism, that there's always a message. There's always something for you to take away from that. And so I'm hoping that you tap into what you needed to hear and that you use that as your motivation for the rest of the day. And then also remember that you know, many of the yoga poses are named after animals or sages for the same reason. And so that while you're in the pose, you're connecting with that message and figuring out what it is you need to hear. Yeah. All right. So having said all that, um, this class is going to be very conscious. We're not making haphazard movements. We're thinking everything through. We're moving slowly and we're finding stillness. So hopefully one of those words is something that you felt like you needed out of your practice today. And I'll get around to telling you why in a moment. But that's why I lit a candle for this practice that hopefully I don't run into. I have an oil diffuser going. And so if you're watching this video back on YouTube, you could pause right here and go get yourself some, um, you know, 
elements that you can add to heighten the mood for you, make it more relaxing and peaceful. All right, so I just want you to feel the body as it lies right here. Feel the back of the body pushing down against the earth. The backs of the knees push it down on the bolster. And then allow your focus to move to your abdomen. Yeah, just consciously focusing on the abdomen. And then imagining what it would feel like if your right hand was resting on your abdomen. We're not moving the arm, we're just imagining this. So can you kind of feel the added weight on your stomach? What does the arm feel like? Your hand can feel the fabric of your shirt. The elbow's no longer straight. Does it like being bent? Does it not? And then move your focus into the right hand, right wrist, right forearm. And imagine that you're moving it so you can rest the hand on your abdomen. Again, we're not actually moving yet. And this gives us time to pause and reflect on, let's just say that you did have an issue with your right elbow. By imagining moving, moving, moving the arm, we can think about, is that the right move for me? Is my elbow gonna like being bent or does it prefer being straight because I'm having issues with it, right? So we're thinking about our action before we're doing it. That's kind of a, uh, a tall order, right? How many times do we or the people around us think about their actions before they actually do it? So we're incorporating a pause. We're incorporating some stillness, right? Okay, so what I want you to do next, when you get to the next inhale, ever so slowly, I want you to go ahead and take that right hand and allow it to rest on your abdomen. And does it feel the way you thought it would? And then I want you to take your focus into your left hand, left wrist, left forearm. And I want you to, again, imagine what it would feel like to bring that left hand up on top of the stomach too. And then here, I want you to make a decision. Option A, leave the left arm where it is. Option B, next inhale, slowly bring that hand to rest on top of you. Completely up to you which, which way you want to go. And so now we either have one or both hands that can feel the breath. So taking the focus to the inhale and the exhales. And 
and then remember every movement is going to be very slow and deliberate so when you're ready I want to very peacefully take my legs into cobbler. My ankles and feet will be up on the bolster. We're just going to stay right here. So I mentioned the other day, I had two signs from the universe, probably within about 10 minutes of each other. One in my backyard, one in my front yard. The one in the backyard was there first, but I want to start with the one in the front yard because then the theme is going to make more sense. So, you know, next to my front door is a thin, narrow window like many of us might have. And as I was walking past, I stopped and saw on my front um, step, well, I guess you won't believe me if I say it was a bug the size of Ohio, but it was close. It was a praying mantis that was at least four inches long, if not five. And I've never seen one before. So I stopped and at first just, you know, my thoughts are what on earth? And then the more I stood there and looked, the more I noticed the praying mantis did nothing. It just sat there. And when it did have a movement with a leg, it was very slow and methodical. So I sat down there on the floor and just watched it. And it didn't do anything. I watched it do nothing. <laughs> but there's a point to this. But first, before I continue, very slowly take that right arm and reach it overhead. Remember, we've got that blanket there, so we want the wrist to end up ah, peacefully on the blanket. And then let's go ahead and add that left arm. And of course, if either shoulder does not like this, bring the arm back down. Deep inhale, let it go. So I watched this praying mantis do nothing for quite a while actually. And then I decided that, well, he's not going anywhere. So <laughs> I should get up and continue on with my day. Probably a few hours later, I had a package delivered so I went to go get it, but when I was going to open the door, I saw the praying mantis. It had moved, but now it was, it was still out there, and it was right next to this package, and I wasn't so sure I wanted to go out next to it. I definitely could tell it was the flying type. It had beautiful long wings, and not having experienced a praying mantis before, wasn't really sure <laughs> if it would be inclined to fly towards me or away. So I opted to leave my package outside for another couple of hours. Because of the praying mantis and the other sign that I haven't got to, I decided that I should look up the symbolism of the praying mantis. Like, why is this the first one I've seen in person? Why is it on my front step? And why is it not moving? And really the answer is because I hadn't gotten the message yet. And I needed to look it up first. So in looking up the symbolism of the praying mantis, um, you come up with stillness, calmness, meditation. And so I was going to say these little guys are not little. Uh, this new friend of mine, when you come across him, whether it's out in the open or in your dreams, he or she is a reminder that you have allowed your mind to get too chaotic and you need to calm it back down. All right, I'll leave you in this, with the story right there for a moment. Take a deep breath in. Big exhale. So go ahead and bring the arms back down slowly.
Take the right knee over to the left knee. You know an adjective is coming, right? Slowly. Adverb. And then go ahead and roll into a fetal position. Okay, take as much time as you can, pushing your way back up. We just need to realign our props here. Ah, fabulous. So that bolster is going to come to your left side. Reach back for that blanket. Remember, we left it in kind of this long noodle shape. I'm going to take one end and fold it over so that it's just thicker now. And I'm going to put that right up by my hip. And then if you have two blocks, they're both going out behind you. One's going to be for your head. One is going to be for the top hand. So both knees facing to the left. Go ahead and get the bolster between your knees. I want to gently lean over the blanket. So a little bit of a supported side bend, just a little. And then my shoulder, my left shoulder is on the ground. The first block is my beautiful, fabulous pillow. Now notice I pushed my right hand into the ground. Slide that left shoulder forward. Give it all the freedom it, it wants and needs. And then go ahead and take that right arm, reach it overhead, and let the right hand rest on that block. So you've got some options here. The knees can be bent you know, really loosely and, and kind of far away from you if you want. You could pull them in much closer. It's totally up to you. Close your eyes here and let go. So one of the interesting things I read about the praying mantis is that it never makes a move without thinking about it. It is so, I don't want to say slow, conscientious of what it wants to do and what it needs to do, that it doesn't make random haphazard movements. That is why we are emulating the praying mantis on our mat. We're moving slowly, we're thinking about it, and we're deciding, is it necessary? So I did eventually decide I needed that package. And I got one of those um, extending pole duster things. And I opened my screen door crack and stuck the pole out there. Don't worry. I just put it right underneath him and gave a little tap. And he spread out these wings. And it, was, it wasn't like, um, gosh, it wasn't quick. It wasn't like I missed it. The wings slowly came out, and there was a pause, and then it flew off and landed in a tree. It was really quite impressive. And so he again reminds you to be patient. Um, he is a messenger to listen to your intuition. So we're going to keep thinking about mindful movements. Everything on the mat, a mindful movement. So while I have you right here, let's think about a mindful movement. If you don't have any shoulder issues and you're, you're happy as a clam right here, stay here. But we could take that top arm and very slowly, I'm going to bring it forward out in front of me. Just gonna make a big circle with this arm. But I want it to be very mindful. I wanna feel every nuance in my shoulder as my shoulder rotates and shifts. I wanna make sure the shoulder feels safe and secure. That arm's going all the way back behind me. And then coming back to its starting position. And then perhaps we take it in the reverse direction. So reach that arm behind you. And again, you're not doing this if this isn't mindful to your body. And that arm will end up where it started.
mindfully take that right arm straight up to the ceiling. It's kind of hard to continually move this slow, isn't it? You really actually do have to think about it. I'm going to start to lower the arm down behind me. And I'm going to see about catching on to my right foot. Once I have that foot, I'm going to draw it that foot behind me so straighten out the right thigh so your knee and shoulder are in a straight line. A couple of deep breaths here. I'm going to very consciously let go of that foot. I'm going to let the leg return to the bolster. Take my right arm back overhead. And then just soften. Empty out the lungs completely. Really pull the belly button in. Slow, deep inhale. All the way up to the crown chakra. You'll hold the breath to the count of three. And then a huge exhale. When you're ready, bring that right arm back down. Take it slowly. So it might be easiest for you to let the knees hug in on that bolster and then just roll over to the other side. I need to completely turn around so I'm still facing you. If you want to come back up first, that's fine. You decide what works for you. Remember, Give that um, bottom shoulder some space. So really let it reach forward. Yeah, I don't really want to put my arm or ring to that candle. I'm going to hang on to uh, Ganesh's vehicle, his mouse here. I'm sure the mouse has something to tell me too. So anyway, what was in the backyard previous to the praying mantis was, I know this is one of my totem animals, there was a Cooper's hawk sitting on our grill only about four or five feet from the window and he stayed there for quite a while i mean you know he didn't care that we approached the window taking all my pictures um hawks are so fascinating they are um a messenger of spirit right they can obviously fly, they, symbolically all birds, they fly up to the heavens, they retrieve messages, they bring them back down to you, right? The hawk has the additional symbolism of clear eyesight, right? From way up above, the hawk can see very clearly. So the hawk brings perspective and clarity to a situation. He has the power of sight and a hawk uh, reminds you to take the lead, take initiative when the timing is right. Now, do you see how these two are starting to connect? The hawk will take the lead and the initiative when the moment is right. It'll wait. The praying mantis also sits and waits. See, these are the things to start looking for. I mean, so fascinating, and I didn't even, I knew I was seeking something that, that I couldn't find within my house, and it came to me. And all the answers just suddenly began pouring forward, and I just felt so, like, cleansed almost. So I am not the only one I've heard recently saying they've seen a lot of hawks lately and that brings them, it has special symbolism to them. 
um, remember when Hawk shows up that it needs you to not only understand and hear the message it's bringing, to do so, you are going to have to tap into your intuition. The praying mantis already symbolizes intuition, right? Praying mantis is saying, be still, meditate, be peaceful, be calm, think things through. The hawk is saying, once you do that, you hear the message I'm bringing. All right, I know I left you here for a moment. I want you to consider taking that top arm, which remember you don't have to do, or being mindful here. Take that arm, bring it slowly behind you. We're gonna make a big circle. This really gives you the opportunity to pay attention to the shoulder as well, because you know, you might feel some pops or some crackles and you can determine, well, is that just because I need to move or is there something else going on? And then when you're ready, I'm watching that candle, take your arm the other direction. Soften here. And then slowly take that left arm, bring it down behind you. Once it gets there, it can ask the top foot to join it. And then once you have that foot, pull the heel in toward the glute, straighten out the thigh so that you are straight line from the knee to the shoulder. When you're ready, gently let go. The leg will return to the bolster. The arm will return overhead. Empty the lungs. Slow, deep inhale. Hold the breath to the count of three and then let go when you're ready. So I'm going to bring that top hand back down in front of me, however it's easiest for you to push your way back up. Take your time. Come back to um, Sukhasana or Siddhasana for a moment. And just close your eyes right here. We're going to inhale the arms up. Exhale to the heart. And then release the backs of the hands to the knees. I want you to imagine that you are that hawk, that in this pose we're sitting in, we have levitated. So with the chin slightly, you know, the head in the bowed position, imagine that you are looking down at the earth beneath you. Now, hawks have sharp focus, we already said that, right? So they can zero in on little things, however, they also have this beautiful vantage point of perspective because they can see everything. And so I want you to allow the hawk to symbolize as well. We let go of detail and we look at the bigger picture. So you might have something going on in your world where you've been so focused on the little things that you have failed to see really the bigger picture, the bigger meaning to it. 
Yeah, maybe each little thing is annoying and it's wrong and it's upsetting. However, what does it all mean when you back up, right? And then keeping your eyes closed. If you lift the head slightly, somewhere between chin being down and head being center, you're the hawk, you're looking way out in front of you. I want you to notice that you, the hawk, you can see that detail at great distances. And you are able to perceive what others cannot from here. Able to perceive what others cannot. So if you have something going on in your world again, where maybe it doesn't affect you directly, you do, if the hawk shows up, you do have this idea of being able to see maybe how the situation can be fixed that the other people who are too involved can't see, or is hawk trying to tell you that you're too close. You can't see what is right in front of you. So then we go back to the praying mantis. We sit still and we just wait. And we think about our next movement before we do it. Deep inhale, let it go slowly. Okay, this next pose is gonna be a weird one, I'm not gonna to lie to you. Um, it's gonna force me to tell you one of my, my squeamish, uh, I don't even know what the word is. I don't like anything touching or moving my knees. So I don't really like the, this pose, but I'm gonna present it to you and tell you why I don't like it and how you can change it if you also don't like it. So grab your strap and put a small loop in it. If you don't have a strap, you're one of the lucky ones because it makes me like this even less. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but when you have that loop, go ahead and put your feet in it. And so I do want to tighten this around my ankles, but um, I don't tighten it too much. I just want you to be able to get free if you really don't like this. Okay. I need to move my blanket. Move my blocks. We need that bolster. So it's going out in front of me vertically. I just want room um, for my arms at the far end of it. So I know this is a little awkward, your feet are in a bind. You could slip one out for the moment if that helps you. I just want to get over onto my knees. Now we're coming down on the bolster. I want to lay the edge of my hip bones right on the edge of the bolster. And then hopefully you have room for your head. So I'm pretty short, right? If you are finding that that isn't even, it's just not possible, you might want your blanket out in front here so that your head is not hanging in limbo. Now, where we're heading with this is kind of, it's kind of cobbler upside down. So feet together, which is why you have them bound because it's really hard to hold them in place uh, like this upside down, knees are wide. The reason I don't like this is because I can feel the floor pushing on my inner kneecap and I can't stand that. But if you don't have that squeamish issue, you'll be fine here. So you can come down like this. If you have the same knee issue I do, you can straighten out the legs. Just keep them bouncy. You don't have to work to hold them together. I know that's it's really goofy and crazy, but that's just the way it is. So you decide. Uh, which of those positions is best for you. And as you find your stillness here, the praying mantis reminds us that Wisdom does not really come to us when we send the mind in every direction, scrambling and scratching and trying to find answers. The wisdom of the answers comes to us when we're quiet. 
And so before the hawk and the praying mantis showed up, I did have my mind um, in chaos. I did have a situation that arose that just put me over the edge. And I knew that I had not tapped into my calm. And I knew I also had to, um, I had to wait it out. Sometimes we need to be a little bit crazy and, and let that, that stuff out. But the praying mantis, as soon as I looked him up and saw that he represented meditation and calmness and tapping into intuition uh, in association with the hawk that had already been here, I knew I had to go close, well, I came in here, I closed the door. I turned on the oil diffuser, put on some fabulous music. I laid still. I resisted the urge to move in any way and the answer started coming. So try it out. Don't wait for the praying mantis to show up. If you feel like you absolutely need to see him first, Google him and pull up a picture because we always have the answers we need. They just need to be um, accessed when we're quiet. And the mind, it's full of that chitra vritri that uh, Patanjali talks about, that mind chatter. And so sometimes it's hard to hear beyond it. All right, how are you doing in this pose? I'll try joining you for a little while with the knees bent, although it still creeps me out. If you do have your head turned to one side, go ahead and turn it to the other. When you're ready, take breath. Slowly get your hands underneath you. So there's a couple ways out of this. Remember, I said don't tighten that strap too tightly. So you could just slip a foot out and make life easy. But if your feet are stuck, all we need to do is push back in the child's pose. So get your hands underneath you, lift and push the hips back. And now we're in a. <laughs> I was going to say like a. A more secure pose. It feels a little more secure. I'm just going to slide my bolster in towards me a little bit so I can rest my head here in child's pose. You might be able to reach the arms forward and grab onto the far edges of the bolster. I'm just breathing into the low back, breathing into the stomach. And then again, turn your head to the other side. So you have another uh, set of options before you. As you come up into your elbows, you could reach back and slip the strap off of the other ankle. I'm just going to leave mine to show you that I'm really not worried about the strap being there. So if you can't reach it, you shouldn't be worried about it either. I don't think it's going to bother us. We're just coming up into table. Tuck the toes, downward facing dog, walk it out. Oh, there, mine just slipped right off my foot, so I'm going to kick it aside. And then we'll walk the feet forward halfway so that we can sit back down right in the middle of our mat. Of course, have your props nearby, will you? And then Janusharsasana with the leg. Let's take that right leg straight out. We'll tuck the left one in first. Pull that right hip back. 
Left hand to the outside of the right leg, right hand behind you. Flex the front foot, spread the toes wide. Big inhale, sit up. Exhale, twist to the right. And you should notice that the left hand has some tension against the um, right leg. I'm, I'm pushing pretty hard into that leg to help me accentuate. Okay. I'm having trouble with English words today. Accentuate the twist. Okay, keep the twist. Don't change anything. We are going to mindfully sit up again, taller. When you get to an exhale, that left hand is going to start sliding down the outside of the right leg. It's just going to guide me down into a little bit of a side fold here. So it's a twisted fold. You decide how far you're going to go. Well, actually, the hamstring is really deciding for you, isn't it? Breathe here. Good job. Okay, slowly come back up and untangle that twist. Uh, now take the twist to the other side just to balance things out. The praying mantis also represents balance. Ah, perfect. So coming back to center, I'm going to grab my blanket because it just happens to be behind me. Let's slide it underneath that right knee. And then whatever other props you want. We're coming down into a fold over this leg. So if you want to um, be super peaceful, you might want that bolster up on top so you can lay down. You could put blocks on top of it. If you don't want a prop, you can come straight down over that right leg. Completely up to you. You make the choice. Make it a mindful choice. And when you get there, close your eyes. So because the praying mantis um, doesn't make sudden movements, it has this mindful movement concept to it. It has intention, right? It, it, it intends when it's going to move and how it's going to move. So it symbolizes intention. And when the praying mantis comes to you, it comes generally when you need clarity and strength. And then when you're ready, you'll use your hands to get you back up, pushing the ground away and set the props aside for a moment. We're just switching legs. That's going to be in my way. There we go. Pull that, woo, pull that left hip back. And then the right hand's coming to the outside of the left leg. Left hand behind you, sit up tall, and take that twist. Now 
And then remember, we're holding the twist. We're just gonna let the right hand start to slide down the outside of that left leg. I'm staying with the heart and, and gaze towards the left, just seeing where we can get to. very mindfully and slowly coming back up. I'm simply going to take both hands to the other side to kind of counter that twist. And as you come back to center, we'll take that blanket again, put it underneath that left knee, flex the front foot. You're either coming straight down in a fold or you're piling up props. It's totally up to you. When you're ready, let the hands do the work. Perfect. Take that blanket, bring it around behind you. You could put one block on either side of you. Grab that bolster again. All right, I'm just gonna put the bolster between my knees for the moment. Come on down. We want that blanket to end up underneath the neck. Ah, perfect. Okay, so pull the knees in towards you, still that bolster between your legs. I have a block off to my left. So as I drop the legs to the left, I am hoping that my bottom leg will land gently wherever I need that block to be to hold me in place. Take the arms into scarecrow. If you need to get the arms under the blanket, you can do that. Make sure the right shoulder blade is down on the earth. And then, so we, we kind of took on the energy of the hawk. I hope you're not squeamish about bugs. Let's take on the energy of the praying mantis and not move. As the breath moves through you, feeling content just to be as you are. And if you feel like something has to move, Think about it before you do it. I mean, why does it have to? If something's in pain, yes, you should mindfully move. If you have an itch on the top of your right knee, mm, I don't know, do you have to move?
And now I'm letting my mind shift to when I'm ready to move, how do I want that to occur? Right? I mean, think about it, feel each movement. Do you need to bring the right foot back to the ground first? Um, you know, could you hug in on the bolster and then pull both knees back up? I don't know. That's a big question for you that we don't want to use low back muscles to do that. So we're thinking everything through. What are some other options? So being very mindful and slow, you decide what is best for you. How do you want to move? We have to get back to center, so I'm going to let you all go there on your own. Slow, conscious movements. When you're ready, bring the knees back in towards you. Have that block waiting for you on your right side. Carefully drop the legs to the right. That right hand is there to help you move the block <laughs> or move the wall. And then take the arms again into Scarecrow. That left shoulder blade's down, right? Left shoulder. And we're not forcing it there. Just make the block higher if you can't get the shoulder down. Now go back to being the praying mantis. We're not moving. Thinking about every action. And again, from here, we can start imagining how we might move when we're ready to. Come up with some different options. Or if you want to do something different on this side, be the hawk and be up above looking down at your body on the mat with this grand perspective of how you should probably move. Okay, when you're ready, take it slowly. We're just trying to find our way back to center on our backs. I'm gonna take that bolster carefully and get my feet to drop it so that it'll be underneath my knees. I'm gonna stretch out my legs. You have those blocks on either side of you. Why don't you allow each hand to rest up on a block? So I have my elbows on the ground, hands on the blocks. And 
just imagining letting go of the physical body. Just, it's totally fine here, right? Nothing's going to happen. Every part of our body is comfortably propped, so just let go. And take your focus to the third eye. And feel yourself softening into its space. center of intuition, meditation, it is my intention as you rest right here that whatever answers would be helpful to you today start to come through for you. And unless you're totally opposed, I'm going to leave you right here for Shavasana. If you absolutely want to change something, think about it first. Why? And how are you going to get there? And then go ahead and do it. I'll come back and get you.
Keeping your eyes closed, take your focus down into the toes without moving them. And imagine how they would feel if you were moving them. And then go ahead and move the toes and the feet. Take your focus into your right hand. Imagine wiggling the fingers. And then go ahead and wiggle the fingers on the right hand. Take your focus to the left hand, same thing. Imagine the hand and the fingers moving. And then allow them to move. from here, I'm going to very consciously draw one knee in, and then the other, As you slowly tip to whichever side you want to in the fetal position, if your block is there, you might want to move it out of your way first, or you might prefer to land on it so you're propped up a little bit. I want you to picture how you're going to push yourself up. Keep your eyes closed. And then go ahead and make your way back up to any seated pose. Let's go ahead and drop the head towards the right shoulder. Slowly roll it down and across to the left. And then back around to the right. And then bring the head back to center. Draw the shoulders up. Exhale them back and down. Inhale, both arms up. Bring the palms together and exhale them home to your heart in prayer pose. The light in me bows to the light in you. And when I'm in that place in me, and you're in that place in you, then we become one. Namaste. Namaste.